One of the challenges of developing a web application is working with data. It's important to test your application with real data to make sure that it works as expected. But sometimes you don't have access to that data. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Faker.js to create realistic fake data for your web application. The tech stack that I'm going to be using is Next.js with JavaScript and Tailwind CSS for styling. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is clone our starter repository. I already created the project. I have a starter and a final branch. For this case, we are going to stick with the starter. If you want to skip and just get the final result, you could go back here and select this branch. We're going to click code and copy this SSH path. Then open up our terminal. Once we have our terminal open, we could do a git clone and paste that SSH. Now the starter repository should show up on the desktop. I'm going to close everything now and open up the project in VS Code. Once the project is open up in VS Code, you can open up the terminal, do an npm install to install all the packages. Once it's done installing, then type npm run dev. Once you run that command, you can go to your browser and open up localhost. And this is what your screen should look like. Once you have everything set up, the next thing we are going to do is we are going to add the faker.js package. To do that, I'm going to stop what is currently running open up Faker.js's website. Once I'm on their website, I'm going to go to get started. Then it brings you to this page. It gives you a little bit of an overview of exactly what is Faker if you want to take the time to look at it. We are going to be focusing on this installation part. We are going to copy this and paste it into our terminal and run it so we can install that package. Once we have it installed, then we could do npm run dev again. We are then going to start creating our data. To do so, we are going to create a new folder called utils, and we are going to create a file called generate fake users. The first thing we need to do is we need to import our faker object. In order to do that, we type import faker the next thing we are going to do is we are going to create a function that generates a fake user. From there, we are going to return a dictionary of items. The items that I want to include is an ID. And here are the items that I eventually want to include. So after looking at the documentation and seeing what APIs are available, I decide to go with these items. To create a fake ID, we're going to use this API, Faker data type UUID. Copy this and paste it in place of where the current quotation marks are. So that's our first item. And we are going to do the same for the other items. So we are done creating our function that generates a fake user. Now we need to create a function that generates an array of fake users. To do that, we are going to be exporting this later on and you'll see why. And we're going to call this function generate fake users. So once we have created our function, we are actually going to be passing a parameter into it and you'll see why. We're gonna name this parameter called length. Then after that, we are going to create a constant called users and make that equal to an empty array. From there, we are going to populate this array with this function. So this array function takes in a length input. So that'll be dependent on you and you'll see where this is implemented. And for each iteration, it calls this fake user function that we created above and pushes it into our array. So in the end, we are going to be returning users which is an array of dictionaries so that's it for our generate fake users file now the next thing we are going to do is go inside our app directory and select page right now our page is showing us only this hello world however i want to display the users that we just created to do that the first thing we are going to do is import the function that we just created once we have that imported the next thing we are going to do is we are going to create a constant called data, set data, and make that equal to use state and empty array. Since we are doing that, we need to do a couple of things. We need to import use state. We also need to add use client. The next thing we are going to do is we are going to add a use effect. We are going to create a constant called load data. This variable is going to be equal to the function that we just imported and we are going to import how many items that we want to show up on our screen. And our parameter input is going to be a number which represents the amount of items that we want to create. So I'm gonna say let's create four users. Once we have that, then we are going to set our data equal to load data. 
Once we do that, then I'm gonna go ahead and change hello world to users. And then right beneath it, I'm going to create a div. Inside of this div, we are going to be mapping our items. Now, since we use this set data, then we could go ahead and use our data variable and map our items. For demonstration purposes, we are going to be returning a paragraph with our item full name. So this will return the full name of the user. And not only that, we also want to add a key to our paragraph. Now, as you can see, our fake data has loaded. So now that we have our data, I wanna style it a little bit. I wanna put each user inside a card. To do that, we're going to go back here and create a components folder. This components folder is going to have a card. Now we need to create our card function. Once we do that, we are going to have some inputs into our card. Now to see what it looks like, we could go back to the page file and import card. And instead of returning a paragraph, we are going to return our card that we just imported. Now when we refresh the page, the only thing that we see are card, which is what is inside our current card. Now we want to pass to this card these items. So I'm going to copy this. These are our parameters. And then don't forget, make sure to add a key to the card. Once we've done those things, we are passing our data to our card. However, we are not displaying it yet. So we need to use it inside here. Before we do so, I'm going to style it a little bit. I am going to create an outer div using Tailwind CSS. I'm setting the card width to 80, making sure that it's rounded that the background is gray 200 and that there's a shadow. Next thing I want to do is create a div inside of it, which is going to represent the structure of inside the card. Now within here, I'm going to create two other divs. Then inside here, our avatar is an image. So I wanna make sure that I'm passing an image into our card. So on the left side, there is going to be an image and the, on the right side is gonna be the information of our user. So this is what the image is going to look like. And once we add it, we are going to import image from Next.js. Now, once I do this, it's going to give us an error. And this is because the avatar is using a specific domain. What we have to do is we have to go inside our Next.js config file and add this domain. Right underneath here, we are going to include images. Inside, we're going to create a dictionary. We're going to call it domains. And then inside here, we are going to add this domain our Cloudflare domain. Once we do that, it says that we have to restart our server. Now when we go back and reload our page, now we see some users showing up. Now there is no space in between these cards yet. So I'm gonna go back to page and make sure that this div is going to be styled. So now after adding those items, what it's saying is that we have a flex group, which is a column, and we have a space of four in between each card. I'm going to bring this up a little bit higher. So I'm gonna change this padding right here to 12. So now we have a little bit more space. I'm going to go back to card and the next items that we need to add is our name and our job. Once we do that, now you see we have some cards. Now you could go ahead and style it however way you want. You could change the background to, to a color. Let's say violet. If you refresh the page, you see that it changes. If I reload the page, you can see that our users change. And this is because every single time we render it, it's referencing our generate fake users function. Now, if we want to increase the amount of users that we have, we could go back to page and increase it to something like 10 and then reload the page. And you can see that we have some more users on our screen. If you wanna style the name, you could do font bold, and then it will bold the first name. There's a lot of ways that you could go from here. So that's how you use Faker.js to create fake data. In the next few videos, I'll be talking in depth on how to add pagination to this. So instead of having just one long page, you have some options to go to the next page. So keep a lookout for that video. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment section below and check out more of my videos. Until next time.